Mm. So in this work, uh, we propose an automated bug explanation system which takes a bug implementation and a correct implementation from the instructor and failing test case and produce the bug report indicating root cause and explain the, the causality by comparing two executions. So next, I will explain the challenges in this work and basic idea of our system. And I will define the problem in more formal way. And I will describe our algorithm and evaluation. The most difficult challenge in comparing executions is that the two implementations are developed by two programmers. Uh, therefore, the, two impl the implementations may have substantial differences, even though they implement the same algorithm. And this kind of binary algorithm is are mixed with the buggy differences. Therefore, we need to distinguish the two differences in order to identify the root cause. And from our observation, we classify the benign differences in two, into two categories. One is in synthetic differences. This includes a variable name difference and expression differences. In this example, uh, the, the, the two code compute the middle point between two values, but they use different, va different names and different expression. And this kind of differences can be eliminated by comparing their symbolic expressions. And the other type is semantic differences. Two programs may have different uh, control structures, and they may have different data structures. And they also may use different concrete values to represent the same thing. For example, to represent on or off state, one may use Boolean variable, or one may use uh, enumeration. Now I'll present the basic idea with uh, uh, with an example. And here there are two, two implementations of sum of even Fibonacci numbers. This two program takes three inputs. The first two are the initial Fibonacci number, which is one and two. And the last uh, parameter is the upper bound. And if the Fibonacci number exceeds the upper bound, the program will stop. Now let's look at the correct implementation. The line five compute the next Fibonacci number and line six stop the program if it exceeds the maximum upper bound. And line seven checks if the number is even, and if it is, it will add it to the sum. And if you look at the buggy implementation, the most notable differences are the for loop, which repeats three times, and the differences in the condition. And this program does not check whether the number is even or not. This is because the bug implementation used the fact that every third Fibonacci number is even. And these two are substantial differences compared to the correct one, but they are still benign differences. And this does not cause the bug in this case. And the rest of programs are quite similar to the correct one. The line six computes the Fibonacci number. And line eight checks the upper bound. And line 13 adds it to the sum. The actual bug is in the line eight. Uh, so instead of I1 plus I0, the program should compare with I1 with N. Now let's look at the execution of each program. So first, uh, the correct implementation computes the sequence of pivot numbers. And if the pivot number is even, it will add to the sum. And it will keep generating the pivot number. And if you look at the detail about the, the Fibonacci number 34, the program first check whether it exceeds the upper bound, and if, check if the number is even. In this case, it will add it to the sum. And at later, it will return the sum, which is 44. But on the other hand, uh, in, the buggy expression, buggy, uh, in the buggy execution, the buggy execution also generates a sequence of Fibonacci number similar to the uh, correct implementation. And at every third Fibonacci number, the bug implementation adds the, the bug implementation adds a number to the sum. However, for the case of 34, because of the bug in the if condition, the program fails to add the number into the sum. And as a result, it simply returns the 10. You can see that uh, the most of the execution can be aligned by comparing their uh, symbolic expression. 
and also the bug resides in the online parts of the execution. So in order to understand the bug, we need to focus on those parts. Now to define the problem, we are, I will first define the rules for the valid matchings, is, which is called wearfulness constraint. The first rule is that if the two assignments match, then their symbolic expression must be equivalent. The second rule is that if two assignments match, then, then their control dependencies must align. This means that two matched assignments should be in the same <coughs> control structure. The third rule is that there should be no cycle in the dependence graph. Uh, here is an example uh, execution. In this diagram, the blue arrow represents the control dependence uh, relationship. So in this case, the, in the left execution, the C2 is control dependent on C1, and D2 is control dependent on D1. And let's just assume we already aligned C2 with D1. In this case, we cannot align C1 with D2 because this form a cycle. And also, this cycle can include a data flow. This uh, black arrow represents the data dependency relationship. And similarly, in this case, if we align C2 with D1, then we cannot align C the X with Y because this form a cycle in the dependence <coughs> graph. Now we can define our problem by maximizing the matchings between assignments while ensuring the previous constraints. And this becomes partial maximum satisfiability problem. The PMAX set is a problem of maximizing the subclauses while ensuring all the hard, hard clauses. And in our case, the assignment match becomes the subclause, and where from this constraint becomes the hard clause. However, this PMAX set problem, problem is well known as MP hard. So therefore, we present a, our algorithm to approximate the result of this underlying PMAX set problem. So our system, uh, our algorithm consists of three steps. In the first step, we first try to align the assignment. We first try to match assignment with symbolic expression equivalence. And we align their control dependencies if this alignment does not violate the constraints. And in here, we do not use symbolic expression of the predicate to align the control dependencies because in many cases, we have seen that the predicate, the same predicates actually have different uh, symbolic expression. Actually, in, even in the previous example, these two if statements should be aligned together, but they have completely different uh, symbolic expression. So we just treat this predicate as a placeholder, and we try to align this place place orders. So in the next step, we try to couple the residue alignment, uh, the residue traces. During the first step, there are still some instances that should be aligned, but we could not because of some bug in the, uh, in the implementation. So in the second step, we try to couple these residues by looking at the history that generated in the first step. And the and at the final stage, we construct a comparative dependence graph by merging the matched or aligned or coupled instances all together. And we produce explanation by slicing on the, on the dependence graph. Now let's see how this works in the previous, uh, with the previous example. Uh, here are here are parts of the execution traces from the previous example. And the first, since the first step is match assignments with uh, symbolic equivalence, let's focus on the assignment, assignment statements. And here are the state of each assignment instances. And we can see that the instance 5 sub 1 and 6 sub 1 have equivalent, equivalent state. Uh, therefore, we can match. We can match these two instances together, and after this matching, we try to align their control dependencies. 
the first, the, the entry becomes the control dependence of the instance 5 sub 1. And in the bug execution, in the bug execution, the instance 5 sub 1, 4 sub 1, and entry, all, of, all three statement instances are uh, control dependence of 6 sub 1. So we try to align these two. And since there is no existing match or alignment, we can align these two without any problem. And if, you con if we continue this process, we can see that these two instances also have the same equivalent state. And we try to align their control dependencies. However, the parts of their control dependencies have already aligned. So we can narrow down our focus on the residues, the remaining unaligned uh, control dependencies. And since this new alignment does not form a new cycle, so we can also assume that this is a true value matching. By repeating this process, we can align the most of the executions. And after that, the second step, in the second step, we try to couple the residue traces. Uh, Let's first look at the parts of the execution that already been matched in the first phase. So this part of the execution can be matched or aligned with the first step because uh, statement 8 and statement 13 has equivalent state. However, if you look at the, the last, last part of the execution, then this part, this part of the execution uh, cannot be matched because of the bug in the statement eight. However, into from, however, from the previous uh, matching history, we know that the statement six can be matched with statement eight. And by using this kind of this information, we can couple this unaligned predicates altogether. And if you look, closely to the branch outcome, you can see this coupled, instant, coupled pair of instances have different branch outcome than the match, uh, the aligned instances. And by, by looking at this, even though this instance 6.6 six, six and 8.6 are coupled together, but there are still some branch outcome differences in that instance. And similarly, we can also align the seven with 12 with the same process. And by repeating this, uh, we can couple the register traces. And after we discover all the matching and alignment and coupling information, we can construct a uh, dependence graph by merging these instances. So first, uh, we, can we can merge this 5 sub 3 and 6 sub 3 since they are matched. And similarly, we can merge this matches and coupled, or matches and aligned or coupled nodes all together. And by repeating this, we can construct a comparative dependence graph for the entire execution. In this graph, the blue nodes represent the coupled instances. And this yellow node represents the unmatched instances. In the yellow node, you can see that there is only one, uh, one instance and the other part is none. This represents that these instances have no match in the other execution. So with this uh, dependence graph, we can generate explanation using slicing. So start from up differences, we can we traverse backward along the dependence edge until we meet a matched node. So if we start from the buggy output, since the buggy output comes from a matched node, our slicing will stop there. However, if we if we start from correct output, the correct output comes from a matched node, so we can traverse backward until we reach the matched instance. After we generating this slicing, we can interpret slicing into a plain language to generate explanation. So the first part can be interpreted as the condition should be I2, should compare I2 with N instead of I1 plus I0 with N. 
And if you look at closely, we can actually translate the N2 in the original program with I2, which is term of the bug, in, bug implementation. This can be done with the matching information. So similarly, we can generate uh, for the lesser part, we can generate the, the causality of the bug. Uh, we have evaluated our system on 205 bug submissions from four programming assignments. So uh, the convert case is turn a number with one latex into another. And LPN calculator program evaluates a postfix, evaluate, postfix expression. And balances checks if the string is valid. And count words counts the frequency of each word. And here are parts of the evaluation. We have observed that the uh, bug submission have on average 87 lines of code. And when we compare bug sub bug submission with the instructor solution, on average 75% of the code are different. And uh, the generated bug report from our tool includes only 2.2 statements, and which suggests that our final outcome is very succinct. And our tool can identify correct loss cause and explain the causality for 195 cases. <coughs> And also, with our tool, we can classify those root causes by the parts that is not that are not correctly implemented by the students. And the first observation from this experiment is that most bugs students make are fall into a few categories. In the convert case, 72% of bugs fall into three categories, and 46% of the bugs fall into invalid number handling category. And the second observation is that typos in the final, uh, final output message is very common. In balanced case, 20% of the bugs are simple typos in the outcome. So if we simply compare it with the testing oracle, then it will give the students that as the your output is wrong. but with our system, we can correctly identify the bug is actually simple typos in the, in the binary output, and there is nothing wrong in your overall algorithm. And to understand the quality of our results, we evaluate our system with 34 undergrad students, and we divide students into two groups, one using our tool and the other not using our tool. And we request them to implement the convert within two hours. In the first, in the group A, which used our tool, the only 12% of students fail to finish within time. But in the other group, 47% of students fail to do, fail to implement the convert within two hours. And also in group A, 44% of students finish it in an hour. But in the other group, only 18% of students did. And so this suggests that our tool can help the productivity of the student. And when we ask the student, 78% of students in group A agree that our tool is useful. So there are, besides of education related work, there are many other work on comparative debugging and forced localization, but they are all using multiple executions from the same program. And also there are many equivalent checking tools, but they simply give us uh, uh, some test cases that make the two programs differ. And there are many automated repair techniques, but simply repairing the buggy student submission won't help students to learn their mistake. So as a conclusion, in this work we presented APEX, a system that explains the bugs in programming assignments. And we formalized the problem with PMAX set, P -max set and our algorithm, we presented our algorithm, which, is, which makes an approximate, approximate solution. And our experiment shows that 
our system can accurately identify and explain the cause for 94% of cases. And the user studies suggest that our tool can help the student productivity and help students to understand their problem. And this concludes uh, my talk. And thank you for listening. <laughs>